Hello YouTubers, Muskrat Jim here again on this crisp fall morning here in Atlantic Canada. After my last video, Adirondack the Bark Eaters, one of my new subscribers suggested that I make a video on the different bush teas. So Grizzville, this one's for you. So stay tuned and we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of 10 different bush teas. We will talk about a couple that I haven't found yet. And we'll talk about the survival benefits of making tea. Backwoods tea can be made year-round using the fruit, leaves, or needles of familiar plants in your area. Simply collect those ingredients and steep them in boiling water for five minutes or until the water is cool enough to drink. So come along with me and we'll go collect some ingredients. These are blackberry plants. The berries are all gone now, but you can still steep the leaves to make a tea. These are wild strawberry plants. Like the blackberries, the fruits have long gone, but you can still make a tea from the leaves. This is a jack pine. All the pines are edible, so you can make a tea from all of them. One of the ways to recognize the jack pine is that each needle sits in a pear. As you can see, the needles grow in pairs. And this is the white pine. It's got long slender needles and they grow in tufts of five. You see, you can see it right there. Now this is red spruce. You can tell a spruce because the needles grow all the way around the twig like this. And the way you can tell that this is a red spruce is because of the length of the needles. These needles are about half inch to three quarters of an inch in length. And another discerning feature about spruce needles is that they're actually square, so you can roll them between your fingers. Unlike a balsam fir that has flat needles. Now this is a blue spruce. Again, it's got long needles, like the red spruce, but the color is actually a really light shade of green. Now this is a black spruce. Again, the needles grow all the way around the twig, but look how short the needles are. They're only half as long as that on the red or the blue spruce. This is the ripened fruit of the hawthorn tree. And you can recognize the hawthorn by the size of the thorns on the plant. They're really straight and they're about two and a half centimeters, a good inch. They're a good inch or so long. Here we have wintergreen. It's a small little shrub with thick waxy leaves that grows in the shade. These ones are growing at the base of this oak tree. Now wintergreen typically has little red berries and the berries and the leaves both taste like well like toothpaste. Wintergreen is also called tea berry and that gives you an indication of its popularity as a tea. The other thing about wintergreen is that it stays green in the winter. These leaves will stay on the plant even under the snow all you have to do is dig under a, um, an evergreen tree and right at the base of it you'll often find wintergreen. Another popular tea ingredient is the rose hips. These will stay on the plant well into the winter so they're an excellent source of survival food. You can make tea by steeping the hips and also by chopping up and steeping the leaves. Okay, so here we are with our bag of ingredients. Although backwoods tea can be made year round, certain ingredients are better at certain times of the year. Needles, for example, are best in the spring when they're nice and tender. Fruit is best after it's ripened. And leaves are best before they wilt and fall off the plant. So let me pour these out and we'll get started. Okay, so here we are. 
We have a cup for rose hips, hawthorn, wintergreen, blackberry, strawberry, blue spruce, black spruce, red spruce, jack pine, and finally white pine. So let's boil some water and get things started. When making your tea, you can chop up your ingredients so the hot water can quickly draw out the plant oils, vitamins and minerals, but then you'll need a filter to remove the chunks. Alternatively, you can put the ingredients in whole. It will take longer to steep, but then you can easily remove the pieces or just leave them in, and like a cinnamon stick, let them steep more as you drink. So as I said, if you're going to chop up the ingredients, you'll need some sort of a filter to take all the little bits out of your tea. So I've got a few here that I'd like to point out to you. First of all, I have this little Keurig style coffee cup filter that you can pick up at Walmart for, uh, I think it was like uh, 15 bucks for a pack of four. So you just put your bits in there, snap that shut, pop it in the bottom of your cup, pour your water in, and just let it steep. And then when you're done, you can just Pull the, uh, pull the cup out. So that's one filter. Now if your cup is large enough, you can use one of these reusable coffee type filters. Just like this. Now a third type of filter you can use is a plain old paper coffee filter. You just put that right in your cup and then you can put your ingredients in there, pour the water over it, and then carefully lift it out once you're done. Another type of filter, it's just a simple bandana. You can fold it in half, push it down into the cup, put your ingredients in there and fill it up with water and let it steep. And finally a fourth type of filter is a clean sock. Just put that right in your cup, stretch the neck of the sock around the edge of your cup, put your ingredients in there, pour in boiling water and you're all done. Okay, so now we'll pour in the boiling water. Now, while we wait for these to steep, I'd like to discuss the benefits of tea in a survival situation. The first thing you should do once you realize that you're lost is to stay put, be calm, and assess the situation. And the best way to do that is to pick a spot, light a fire, and make a cup of tea. In a survival situation, you have to stay hydrated. Everyone needs two liters or two quarts a day just to stay healthy. Now typically you're going to just drink the water that you find. So that would be like out of a lake or a stream or a puddle. And you're going to have to boil it anyway to sanitize it. So you might as well make tea. Boiling the water will kill the bacteria and the parasites. And if you make tea from the boiled water, it'll hide some of that funky taste and it'll also keep you warm. Now a point about boiling water. A lot of books tell you that you have to boil it for five to ten minutes. Now if you've ever tried doing that, you'll quickly realize that your container will boil dry. If you bring your water just to a rolling boil, that should be enough to kill any of the critters that might be in there. It's not like you're trying to boil a potato or to cook a lobster. You're just cooking these microscopic little critters. Now aside from these 10 teas, there are two others that I would really like to try. One is Labrador tea, which has been used historically throughout Canada. And two is chaga. Chaga 
is a fungus that grows on dying birch trees and it has a bunch of properties in it they say it cures cancer and you know a whole bunch of other stuff like that you can research that on the web if you like okay so that's been about five minutes or so so let's see what we've got okay so we'll try the rose hips first I'm just gonna leave the rose hips right in there I'll just strain them with my teeth Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it's very sweet. Tastes like apples. Rose hips is a commonly used ingredient for herbal teas, if you ever check the ingredients. Yeah, that's really good. And now we'll try the hawthorn. It's similar to the rose hips, but it's got a, a distinctive, distinctive flavor to it. It's really quite nice. Again, hawthorn, also found commonly in herbal tea blends. Now wintergreen, I've had this before, it's very, very good. It does taste a little bit like toothpaste. Good. The next one is blackberry and I have to take out the bandana that I used. Not too bad. I think I'm still tasting the uh, wintergreen. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now we'll move over to the strawberry. Drain the filter. Now the strawberry leaves didn't color the water as much as the blackberry did. We'll give that a shot. Well, it's okay, but it's not as good as the blackberry. Definitely doing a pinch. Okay. So now we'll try the sock spruce. I mean the blue spruce. Sock out of there. Squeeze it out. And we'll see what that tastes like. Well, it definitely tastes like sock. <laughs> I mean, it definitely tastes like spruce. Not nearly as strong as I thought it would be. Of course, I didn't chop up the um, the needles. I just put them directly into the sock. Yeah, it's not too bad. The next one is the black spruce. Now I left these twigs whole. And we'll try that. Yep, that's nice. It's not very strong. Mm. I can see why this is um, Lonnie's favorite. Lonnie from Fresh Air. His favorite is Black Spruce. He lives in Alaska, and a lot of the, uh, the trees there are spruces. OK, 
Okay, next we have red spruce. So we'll give this a shot. The red spruce, if you'll remember, has the longer needles than the, the black spruce does. And um, tastes a little bit more bitter. Although, again, it's not really that bad. Okay, the next one is the jack pine. And again, I just put the whole twig right in there. Now, all the pines are edible. But some are better than others. Yep, that's not bad either. Now we'll try the white pine. Actually, in my last video, Adirondacks, the uh, bark eaters, I had some white pine tea in there. Yeah, that's very nice. White pine. Well, thanks for joining me today in our exploration of these backwoods teas. I hope that you might consider trying some yourself. But remember, whenever you're trying wild edibles, always use a reputable field guide so you can positively identify what you're eating and drinking. So until next time, this is Muskrat Jim, signing out.